this is Eric and I'm Linda. Thank you for tuning in on our episode of Laboratoria. We loved filming this movement of young women who are coding their way to a better future. If you want to see more of these world fixers or want to watch the episode a little later, then please subscribe to our channel. Let's start the show. Let's start the show. In today's world, where our economies have undergone dramatic shifts, where technology and automation have transformed virtually every industry and changed how people organize and work, entrepreneurship remains the engine of growth. It puts rising economies on the path to prosperity and empowers people to come together and tackle our most pressing global problems, from climate change to poverty. It can make whole communities more prosperous and more secure. It offers a positive path for young people seeking the chance to make something of themselves and can empower people who have previously been locked out of the existing social order, women and minorities, others who aren't part of the old boys network. Mariana Costa Checa of Peru. Mariana is the founder of uh, Laboratoria, which gives young women from low-income backgrounds the education and tools they need to work in the digital sector. We sadly live in a world where people are often judged for what they have rather than for who they are. Over the past couple of years, the wealth gap in Latin America has grown tremendously. According to the World Bank, the richest 10% earn 48% of the total income, whilst the poorest 10 earn less than 1.6. Escaping poverty has become ever more difficult. Mariana and her team designed an educational program to combat this pressing issue. Welcome to Lima, Peru. Mariana and Herman started Laboratoria together with Anna and Rodolfo and two other friends from grad school. During a six-month program, the team educates young women from a low-income background to become web developers. Web developers or coders are people who create the websites and apps we use every day, a skill that is in high demand and is often rewarded with a good salary. I grew up in a place where there's a lot of inequality everywhere. The fact that inequality is so common doesn't mean that that's right. We shouldn't be okay living in a situation like this. In Latin America, there's also this huge group of people which just because of their economic condition or social condition, they can't work or can't study. 70% of that population are women. There's a lot of jobs being destroyed, right, at the current rate because of the advancement of technology. But there's also been jobs that, be, that are being created. But most of those jobs are in high-skilled sectors, in high-tech sectors. And at the current rate, most of those jobs are being taken by men because men are more, more prepared to take those jobs. Women were already at a disadvantage because they haven't had the previous day-to-day -day exposure to technology at home. Whenever the family could buy a computer or a Game Boy or anything tech related, it would go to the boys. Introducing Game Boy. It's portable, it's in stereo, and its games are interchangeable. Plus, Game Boy comes with. The computer at that time for me was kind of like a spaceship. And because I'm a big fan of Star Wars and science fiction, for me, like all those buttons, just, it's a connection to a different world. <laughs> Technology is used almost equally by men and women, but it's being created mainly by men. So there's a few examples, like the first airbags that were designed, the team was composed entirely by men. The prototypes that they used and everything, they used based on their sizes. So when the first ones were out, they weren't as effective protecting smaller bodies, for example. There are very few women in tech to look up to. You can't be what you can't see. I got interested in technology through Herman, and when we met, he was working as a developer in different organizations. So I started working in a nonprofit organization. I learned how to use 
technology to develop products that can actually mobilize people to convince politicians to help uh, developing countries. Maria and I were, were living in, in New York and we wanted to come back to South America to explore what we can do with our skills and experience we had. It's not like I was born and I always felt, oh, I'm going to be an entrepreneur working for women's issues. We literally just bumped into it. Most of the women hear about Laboratoria through media campaigns, online ads and referrals from other graduates. Today, Mariana is visiting one of her students at home, but finding her exact address is not easy. I mean, we are obsessed with, with getting to know each of our coders individually, understanding their family situation, understanding their context. Ella, como ya este salió embarazada, y yo le dije que termine de estudiar porque estaba estudiando diseño. When Carito got pregnant, they never doubted that they had to be there by her side so that she could actually continue studying and find a good job. I mean, a 20-year-old that gets pregnant from a guy that's not going to take care of the baby, often it's like, you figure it out, you know? You'll see how you do it. I'm pretty sure a bunch of the girls that apply, they probably don't know what code is about. But they have the type of personality that they are willing to risk whatever opportunity they have in front. Señor, ¿y qué sabe de lo que Carito está aprendiendo en laboratoria? ¿Sabe algo de específicamente lo que aprende? Y nomás me dice códigos. Es que mi mamá no sabe utilizar el microondas. Es a big commitment for the family because it's, it's a full-time program from nine to six. And obviously that creates a huge friction between them and their families. If the families are not involved, they actually can be one of the main reasons why things don't work out. Y, y así, pues sábado y domingo también. O sea, cerraba su semana ahí. Claro. Si no era allá, era acá, en, en la laptop, en la computadora. Este, creo que fue en el tercer mes de laboratoria. Este, ya no me estaban saliendo los códigos. Aparte de eso, mi hijito como que dejó de decirme mamá y se molestaba porque ya no le leía cuentos en las noches. Yo ya quería dejar laboratoria porque sentía que ya no le estaba dando tiempo. The leader of all the bootcamp is, is a psychologist, right? Uh, and that speaks a lot to what we value this and what we think this program is. When I was helping women with similar issues of abuse, of maltreatment, of poverty, I felt defeated with them because it was nothing that I could do. In this case, it's totally different because we are teaching them something that is going to help them to change their lives. Papo ha sido increíble porque, o sea, yo he tenido amigas que me han ayudado, por decir así, en cinco años, este, a subir mi autoestima un 10%, 20%, pero Papo en seis meses me ha subido creo que al 60%. Entonces... Está bien, no te preocupes. Where she comes from has made things harder, for sure, but does not tell where she's going to end up being. Our students commute for four hours a day to come to Laboratoria. And they don't commute like in a comfortable metro, reading a book. They commute like in four different types of public transportation, in terrible circumstances. So it's, it's very hard. The cost to travel to Laboratoria is about $3 a day, a steep price for all of the students. 
as the average wage in Lima is about 590 US dollars. A number of the students have a side job to pay for the commute. The three to four hours can't be used to finish assignments because the risk of the computers being stolen is too high. We started in 2014, and in a little bit more than two years, we have trained more than 400 students. We don't want it to give them simple skills. That happened before, you know, there's a bunch of cases where you have women learning how to do crafting, and that doesn't mean that it's bad, but that doesn't create a career for them that can exponentially give them access to better salaries, better positions, or become really influential in society. I started exploring like the underground world of software development in Lima, and I think that's when I really said, oh my God, this is amazing. I was meeting all these developers that were like traveling the world, working in their pajamas from home, from like a company in the States, making like 10 times more money than, than I was. And suddenly I was discovering this like loophole in the system. Many of these guys had no degree. If you go to schools in low-income communities, teachers have low expectations. That's probably the worst thing that can happen. We believe that talent is, is everywhere and is equally distributed, that opportunity is not. So this isn't the, you know, just pick up anybody from the streets who might be selling chicle. It's really vetting a group of thousands of girls to find the creme of the crop. I'm Jason LaBarbera. I've been recruiting software engineers in the Silicon Valley for more than 20 years. So I'm here in Lima, Peru to recruit some of their software engineers for companies in the U.S. They have to become very competitive. They have to be the best. But it's still hard knowing that you are, uh, you have to reject the students, yes. It's a consequence of the process, yeah. But what we cannot do is to lower the bar in the selection process. Because my program is focused on employability in the digital industry, which is a very competitive sector. It looks so complicated from the outside, you know? It looks like Chinese. The first time they see the typical black screen with the lines of code, they're like, what is that? I won't be able to learn that. Two weeks into the program, they're building their first websites, and these are things that they can show, and they make them feel very proud. One of the reasons the solution works so well is because the idea came from a generation that understood the digital transition, a small team that is close and tight and knows when to change course when necessary. Four of us are married together. I mean, not the four, but <laughs> almost. I think it's a funny organizational structure. It works very well. Yeah, I don't necessarily recommend it, but I think that for us, it was like kind of like a secret sauce that made things work, you know? When I came to Peru, I realized that these are like true operators who really have no startup experience. It was run as well as any startup I've ever seen. So the organization, the structure, their iteration, their ability to actually make meaningful change and improvements, it was beyond my belief. Laboratory is so demanding. I don't have time to do many of the things that I would like to do. I don't have time to spend more time alone with Herman. Sometimes I miss him. I'm like, I haven't seen you, you know? I see you, but I haven't been able to spend time with you. It's no wonder time is scarce. Laboratoria has been opening new locations in South America at a rapid pace, in Santiago, Mexico City, and Guadalajara, just to name a few. Mariana is about to speak at an event about women empowerment at a large global bank, but it wasn't this gig that triggered the international recognition. I get invited to some panels and sometimes I'm like, oh. This one I was actually excited, that's why I went. 
we are very proud of the opportunities that we've had, but we don't want to be showing off in the end. I mean, what makes us special in the end is the work that we do and how good we're doing it. These are some extraordinary uh, entrepreneurs. Some are just getting started. Some uh, seem to be moving along pretty well. It's an honor to be here. I'm still trying to get over the fact that you just introduced me. I'm so happy. <laughs> When they invited me, I was very pregnant. And the day of the panel, Lucia was gonna be only like 20 days old. She didn't prepare her speech for the panel with Obama and Mark Zuckerberg. Seriously, I was, with, I was with her the night before. I was waiting for her with a list of questions that Obama could make to her and a list of questions that Mark could make to her. And after a couple of questions, when I turned and I see Mariana, she was totally asleep. Totally sleep. She was like this. And I'm like, okay, she's not gonna practice. He's like, oh, and you're Mariana from Peru teaching girls coding. Hola, like, how sweet is that? I mean, the president of the United States. And he's like, read about us. And he's like, remembered, yeah, she's the one from Peru. Yeah, he's the one from Rwanda. Program will be really be a um, uh, long life. I never really liked attention that much. I've always, I'm not shy. I'm very extrovert, but I'm not really the type of person that wants to be the, on the spotlight. I struggle. I'm like, oh my God, I can no longer see my face everywhere. <laughs> I'm just tired. She did it amazingly. Every word that she said was like perfect. So uh, I think that that made the, especially the Peruvians, but I will say all Latin Americans very proud. When we were talking backstage, I had been reading about this and I said 60% of uh, uh, the women who had gone through this program uh, now were employed and I was corrected it's now 70% I had old data she gave us the number yesterday 70% of the women are employed um, it doesn't get any better than that <laughs> and so I don't think there are, are barriers unless for some reason, you have an unconscious bias against low-income individuals, but we all started there. <laughs> we all started as a low-income individual. I love to have a girl. It's more motivation, you know, to continue doing what we're doing. And I hope that she grows to be a generous woman. It's a family adventure. It just helps us to define the way that we want to educate our own daughter. This is the family she was born in, and, and I mean, we are entrepreneurs, and that, that implies that we lead our lives in a certain way. It's a challenge that I'd like to face it with her because it's also kind of like a style of leading. Becoming a parent changes your outlook on life and requires more financial stability. Finding the right business model is key to making the operation sustainable. We don't have a perfect business model yet. The model is that the students, they don't pay for the first part of the program because they're studying full time. Uh, they go out, they work, and once they work, they start paying to Laboratoria. I connect them with jobs. If I'm not successful connecting them with jobs, then they don't pay for the program, okay? So that's accountability for me, and that's how education should be. You see many things around the world where people, NGOs, and people are trying to give back, and they're wonderful initiatives, but they're complicated and they're not sustainable. And hers is very simple. She can control the product, which means greater impact. If these founders are going to figure out how to make this thing scale, I think this would be a very special opportunity. So it's uh, in my best interest to invest in them as much as they're investing in, in our relationship. We have some grants that are quite important to run our operations, but that won't be the case forever. To expose the students to potential employees, Laboratoria organizes hackathons, a coding challenge in which the developers come up with a digital solution for real businesses. 
let's knock the doors of these big companies here let's bring companies from abroad let's bring them together with our students have them develop a product and see what happens so I invited one of my clients Lyft down to a hackathon here in Peru and it was so good that the Lyft representative is actually considering pushing that product into production meaning that any Lyft customer would use the code that was written by these girls from this program. Our students are, are capable to compete in the global market and then they go out and they outperform. They, we have three, three students in DC like being rock stars. First time they were on a plane all the way to DC. They got used to the city, they were in the metro for the first time, they looked for a place to stay, they paid their rent. It actually made me feel a bit nervous on one side, but on the other hand, very proud. And it was very nice for me because, I think also because I have lived there. My first job was in DC after, after university, I moved to DC and I started like from, from zero, right? There is a similarity, I mean, we were more or less the same age exploring a new world and a new life. If I think I was brave, I think they are probably 10 times braver than, than I was. You know, I'm getting older and, you know, I don't want to be a stone in the middle of the road. I'm always afraid not to be so bright. Herman, he's the guy, he's like the visionary, right? He's like the dreamer. He's the one that, that stops the conversation and says, you know what, this is where we need to be, like, in 10 years. No, muchas gracias a todos. La verdad es que estos últimos días han sido días bien intensos. He's kind, he's generous, he's someone that I think has learned to be happy with very little. So that's why I married him. <laughs> Let's go to my house. We we'll have some drinks there. You want to sleep? But I can sleep and you can drink. <laughs> I can drink. Really? Your yeah. Mom, your mommy goes. <laughs> In the future, I think I would like Laboratoria to grow as a movement of transformation. I would like us to be the best place to train thousands of developers, inspire hopefully millions of people, uh, millions of women to, to actually think that there is a way out of this path where they're stuck. There's this breaking point in the program when the girls start to say, for example, that they want to work at Facebook. When they say that, I know I've done my work <laughs> because if they can think they can work in Facebook, they believe in themselves. You know, they, they can see that through that path, you can become not only someone who has a career, but someone who belongs to a community that someone who has a lot, not only to learn, but to show. Y me emociona porque me he hecho dar cuenta que no soy solo mamá, sino también mujer. Y que me debería sentir orgullosa de cómo soy. Lo que puedo dar. Disculpame. Mixing impact with tech is actually who we are as persons. I love what I do at Laboratoria. It really gives my life a very important sense of purpose. Thanks for watching our full episode. We're curious to find out what you think, so leave a comment below and subscribe to our channel.
We have more interesting stories to tell of entrepreneurs who solve big social issues and make money. So hopefully see you next week. Bye-bye.